Hi everyone, this is City Scrapper. Thanks so much for joining me on my channel today. Today I have a layout that I made using the July My Creative Scrapbook Limited Edition Kit. I had been thinking about making a layout like this for quite a while and I finally decided to give it a try. So I took a piece of heavy white cardstock and I measured on all four sides and I made little marks at each inch. Then I took the ruler and my pencil and I drew lines on diagonals and I used those one inch marks as a guide. The idea that I had for this layout was to take some border punches and make lots of strips and then attach them all down layered on top of each other to make a textured background. I chose four border punches that I had in my stash. They were all scalloped punches but they were all a little bit different and I cut multiple strips on some 18 inch paper. For my die cutting machine, I buy 80 pound paper that comes in sheets that are 12 by 18 inches. So that's the paper that I used for this layout. But if you don't have 18 inch paper, that's fine. You can just use 12 inch paper and then piece it together in places that it won't be so noticeable. I'm layering the strips on top of each other and I drew those lines not to necessarily place the strips on top of them, but to kind of guide me as to whether or not I'm placing them down straight. I used four different punches to make four different borders, and then I layered them in a pattern all the way to the center of the page, and I was going to extend the scallop strips across the whole page, and then I was thinking that it might look better to have half the page like that and the other half with a piece of pattern paper. So I took this beautiful paper with the blue background and the white fern leaves on it, and I cut it down to the same size as the strip of paper, I'm sorry, the piece of paper that I was using to put the strips on. And that piece of paper is 11 inches by 11 inches. Here I'm cutting a mat to go behind it. I just wanted a white mat all around the outside. And then I'm attaching down the pattern paper and the strips to the mat. And then I'm going to use another piece of pattern paper from the collection and I'm going to mount it on top of that as well. And you can see that I gutted out the center and I like to attach down paper when I've gutted out the center to another piece of 12 by 12 inch paper. I find that it usually just makes everything go together a little more easily. And then I'm attaching everything down and that will be my background. And I just love that blue pattern paper. That's from the Prima Nature Lover collection. And there were lots of papers and embellishments from that collection in this month's kit. I mounted my photo on some white cardstock. And then I was looking at the chipboard and I noticed that once all the chipboard was removed, there were a lot of large rectangles. And I thought I could trim away some of the chipboard around each of those rectangles and then I would have some frames. So I did that seven times. I made six smaller frames and then there was one larger one. Now I'm embossing each of the frames. I'm going to emboss three of them in yellow, two of them in blue, and one of them in gold. The big one is going to be gold. I apply some liquid adhesive and then I cover the frame with embossing powder and I do that for all three of the frames. And then I use a heat tool and I emboss each one of them. The color that I'm using right now is a Recollections embossing powder. The color is Canary. I'm also using a blue embossing powder on three of the frames and the color of that is called C and that's a Ranger mixed media powder. And I'm also going to use some gold embossing powder and that gold embossing powder was made by a company called Personal Stamp Exchange but I don't end up keeping the gold frame gold. But right now I'm using it to figure out how I want to frame my photo. This is a photo of a conservatory. I've been scrapbooking these photos for a while now and I really liked this one little section of the photo. So I made that the photo that I'm going to put in the larger frame. And then there was another little area that I had a bunch of cacti. So I decided that I was going to have a secondary photo basically using a scrap from the larger photo. And I like the photo better when it's divided into these two sections. I'm just putting some ATG adhesive on some of the frames and I'm going to be arranging everything along the diagonal. 
but other than having frames along a diagonal, I really didn't have any other plan at this point. I want the frames to overlap and be layered on top of each other, so I'm trying to figure out what I think the best arrangement would be. So I play around with the frames for a little while. I'm making some of them horizontal and some of them vertical and some of them on an angle. And then I wasn't sure what else to do, so I thought I would start by backing some of them with some of these ephemera pieces. So I'm trimming the ephemera and then I'm putting some glue on the back of the frame and then attaching the piece of ephemera that's cut to size to the back. And I do this for a couple of the frames. In the end though, I don't leave the paper on the back of most of the frames. Some of them I do and some of them I don't. Sometimes I'll walk away from the layout for some time and then when I come back, I look at the layout a little differently. And when I came back, I thought that it would be nice if some of the frames were a little bit more open, but you really never know what something's going to look like until you do it. So I don't really mind when I do something and then I have to undo it. I feel like I tried out my ideas and some of them work and some of them don't. And I feel like every time I make a mistake, I learn something. <laughs> I hope so anyway. So you can see that I have a lot of these frames backed at this point. And there was a little piece of paper. It wasn't quite big enough. So I thought it would kind of look cool to attach down this piece of paper the way it's on a diagonal and then fill in the back with another little scrap. And now everything is backed. So now I'm going into the embellishments and trying to figure out which of them to include on this layout. I know I'm going to include that bird that's at the bottom. I just think that it's a great color. It brings the blue over to this side of the layout and it just fits there really well. It's looking to the left, which is perfect. So I'm trying out a whole bunch of die cuts, chipboard pieces, and seeing what I like and seeing what I think will add something to this diagonal without making it too busy. I found some word phrases I thought might look nice right underneath some of the frames. I love that little mushroom. I just had to include that on this layout. And this is when I was thinking, nope, too many of those frames are backed and the frames look kind of nice, not backed. So I did leave the two at the top back, the one with the blue paper and then the one that has that piece together background. And at this stage, I'm just kind of picking out the embellishments that I really like and I think will look nice and I'm seeing if I could find a spot for them. I was thinking that I like the way the frames look, so I'm just going to attach those down. And because some of the frames are resting on top of some of the other frames, I needed to cut some very thin pieces of fun foam and use those to pop up the side of the frame that isn't resting on another frame. And then I'm attaching down that little butterfly right on top of that frame. And then I realized that the butterfly is going to need some support. So I cut two little pieces of foam and layered them on top of each other and then attached that piece of chipboard with the butterfly on it on top of the foam. And then I continue going along, popping things up, putting some ATG adhesive on the back and then putting them down on the background. I do end up switching around some of those frames at the top. I didn't like the way they made the pattern yellow, blue, yellow, blue. I thought that that wasn't so interesting, so I am going to move some of the frames around a little bit. Sometimes I feel like you would really want to have a pattern and you would want to alternate colors, but because everything is so different, the frames are different sizes and they're placed in different orientations, I felt that I wanted to get away from having that kind of a color pattern. So I'm just continuing to attach things down and you could see that I have a lot of frames resting on a lot of frames and I'm trying to figure out now what to put in those open frames that I felt that I had to have. So this is a piece of chipboard that has a number of butterfly images on it. And then I'm layering a stamp over that blue frame at the top. And I attach that stamp down at a little bit of an angle. 
And I like the way that adds to that kind of random look that this layout has. As soon as I saw that piece of ephemera that is a bee, I had a feeling that that was going to end up on this layout. So I am layering some fun foam to put behind it. And I put that in one of the frames. And now I feel pretty happy with what's in the frames. And I'm working on the rest of the layout. I have some chipboard pieces, some phrases, and some butterflies that I'm just kind of playing around with and seeing where I think that they'll look best. On my desk, there were two die cuts that I had covered in gold embossing powder, and I decided to try those on the layout. And I'm not sure what it was about them, but I just didn't think that they fit this layout. And then I decided to try these leaves. There was a piece of pattern paper in the collection that had lots and lots of butterflies on it, and then lots and lots of these gold leaves. So butterflies are easy to fussy cut. These took a little bit more time, but I really like the result because the gold is so sparkly and pretty, and I do love to add florals to all of my layouts. So I thought that these were uh, perfect for this page. I thought it would be a nice touch to ink the edges of the chipboard and the ephemera, but I didn't want to use a very dark color. So I used this Distress Oxide in Antique Linen. I like the way it adds a little bit of a look of age to the embellishments, but it's not too dark. And you could see, especially in that cluster on the right, that I'm using every last bit of those leaves that I fussy cut out, those gold leaves. I thought they looked really pretty, and I couldn't get enough of them, so I added every last drop to the background. I am popping up that bird on some foam. And then I'll attach that down to the background. And I am going to be calling my layout Wild Natural Beauty. Wild was a chipboard piece. And then I add part of a piece of ephemera that said Natural Beauty on it. And I find that and I add that in a few moments. So I thought that was good for this layout. Probably not perfect because we're indoors at a conservatory, but it's still nature. Even when you bring it indoors, it's still nature. Although I'm not so sure we can call it wild when it's inside, but that's okay. I think it's close enough. I like the way the gold leaves looked in the corners of the layout. So I go ahead and attach those down. You can also see that at some point I went in and I changed the color of the larger frame. Now it's yellow. I felt that like the gold just got too confusing. There were too many different colors. So I decided that that would look nice yellow. And you could also see that I switched the order of the frames up on top. And now there are two yellow ones together and the two blue ones are separated by the two yellow ones. At this point, I'm almost done with the layout. I have everything placed where I want it. I do want to work on the dimensional flowers though. So I use some fun foam to pop them up a little bit so they're not below the frames. And then I use some of this wet glue to attach them down. This is Elmer's gel glue. But then when I attach down something that's made out of paper, I switch over to the ATG just in case I want to move it around. I'm attaching down the butterflies. I decided to just have the butterflies on the blue pattern paper. Originally, I had them underneath the frames, but the only butterfly that's underneath the frames is the one that's in the cluster with the bird. And I have the three chipboard butterflies on the blue pattern paper. This is where I add in the rest of the title. This little piece of ephemera says natural beauty, as I had said. And I just attach that down. First, I pop it up on some foam. And now the layout is complete. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope that if you like this video, you'll give it a thumbs up. And please check out all of the beautiful kits that are available this month from My Creative Scrapbook. There's a link to the My Creative Scrapbook website in the description box. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you found something that you could use on your own scrapbooking pages. I hope that everybody has a fantastic day and I hope to see everybody soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.